All right, so we're still going through Hardbone and all that stuff in the main campaign, but Story DLC came out for this game. Oh. Barely more than a week ago at this point. It's the <laughs> soonest I've done a Let's Play of something, I think. Yeah, yeah. H hasn't really had time to, to marinate in the brain meat. Yeah. So this is, this is going to be a weird one, but... So... This is also, like, in a separate playlist if you're just looking for the DLC stuff. Uh, we're still going to be going through the the New Game Plus Hard Mode stuff in the main campaign at the same time, but... Confusing, na confusing naming convention. The PlayStation 5 version of this game came out, and it's called Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. But there's also Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission, which is the name of the story DLC. <laughs> uh -huh. Hard to... Uh -huh. it, it's very easy to get confused. Also, you can wiggle around the weapon when you're changing your camera controls. Ooh. I did not know that. This DLC, if you're trying to play this and you only have the PlayStation 4 version, you can't. It's PlayStation 5 exclusive, which sucks. <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer. Does the PS4 at least get photo mode? No. Does it get anything from this PS DLC? PS4 gets nothing from the, the update or anything. It's just the PS4 version. Oh. At, least oh. the, at least the photo mode and all the PS5 upgrade stuff is free. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can find you can find the PS4 version of this game super cheap for, like, 15 bucks and then just, like, upgrade it. But good luck finding a PlayStation 5. <laughs> Finally, the playable Moogle I've been waiting for. It's the final boss, Moggy. Yeah. Put an end to your blood trade, Moggy. Well, guys, your girl finally made it to Midgar. My girl was already in Midgar. Mm. She helped me fight Sephiroth. This is what happens when you don't upgrade your jump points. Yeah. <laughs> you got this, Yuffie. <clears throat> My name is Yuffie, Materia Hunter and Elite Special Forces Operative for the new Wutai government. I have orders to infiltrate Shinra headquarters and steal their ultimate materia. To prove to our common enemy Wutai is not to be trifled with! Members of Avalanche! Your full support! We got this! So, members of Avalanche... Oh, they all died when the plate dropped. Did you see that? I'm They're dead. I'm so sorry. Just you. look up. Just missed them. Yeah, it's... I can't read that. So, mm. I gotta come to you, do I? Well, okay, the members of Avalanche so, might be here. Depends where you are currently and whether or not ghosts have been punched or not. <laughs> I don't know. Is this a Zelda timeline thing? We punch the ghost. We get to redo it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Th if you're watching this, this is a post story thing, so we're going to be talking about the ending of the main campaign. This outfit Yuffie is wearing is a callback to an outfit she wears in the spin-off PlayStation 2 game Dirge of Cerberus. Hmm. Mm hmm Here's a weird... So, well, this is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yuffie was a optional character in the original game. She was a random encounter. You would just find an enemy called Mysterious Ninja, and if you beat her up and won, and then passed a bunch of really weird speech checks, she would join your party? <laughs> now, uh, she... 
So she wasn't in any of the big cinematics or main story beats for the most part of the original game because she and one other optional party member of the game were originally just going to be cut from the game. And they just kept right, them as right. secret characters that didn't have as much story content to them. Uh, Yuffie just has appeared in all the spin-off stuff after the main game, like she's a canonical main party member now, but they it's it's interesting to go back and get story DLC and have a remake where it's like they can have her like as a canonical main party member now because she got very little character development when she popped up in all the side games. It was more just like Yuf is here, too. She's got some goofy side quests for you to do. She's the comic <laughs> relief character. She doesn't do much. So getting actual like new character stuff for her, there's a lot they can do with this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like a, a weird mix of both like audience investment and also blank page to work with. Yeah. So I was real curious how they're going to make Yuffie fight because while everyone was super distinct and had very different play styles in the main campaign, I was like, at this point with a fifth party member, aren't you going to run out of different stuff for them to do? But Yuffie's, Yuffie's extremely fun to play as, very different from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And you still gotta save stuff for the dog. Yeah. So Yuffie fights with a gigantic throwing star. <laughs> Yuffie can do a whole lot of everything, but she's not crazy strong, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's got the, the close-up melee stuff. If you press and hold the attack button instead of mashing it, she does this little puff of like air magic and it it lets her get a good amount of space between her and enemies. Uh-huh. <laughs> there are some new enemies, but also sometimes there are new enemies that are just like, it's a rat, but even grosser than before. <laughs> Gross poison rat. Don't touch him. They've got one ability here that is really good for showing off one of the, the new uh, mechanics that Yuffie has. When she blocks, you'll see a, a character appear over her head, and it starts mm -hmm. it starts draining uh, color quickly, and then it fades away. That's your window to do a perfect block. Ah. So she's the one character where, like, if this rat starts charging at me, I block it. You take zero damage from it. <laughs> and also when you do the perfect block, um, it sends a shockwave out, which can blow, uh, knock weak enemies away from you, and it will also pressure them, and it fills their pressure gauge. So you love playing as Yuffie. This oh, is yeah. your favorite character. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. She's got a bunch of abilities already. The first one is Art of War, which is a damage-dealing move. Um, it has some extra mechanics to it that we won't be seeing be seeing until like another episode or two from now, just because these enemies die too fast to show it off. Uh, well, you can just mash Wait, the. Does that do that dodge has a character? Does that? That was her parry. That's her parry oh, dodge. Okay. Also, this spinning move she does here, like you can just mash the attack button to get a full combo out. But on the second hit, if you just don't press a, a button again, she just spins her throwing star for a long time to do a bunch of extra damage. <laughs> but yeah, she has the parry materia equipped already from the start, so uh, her parry dodge also has the perfect block timing on it. Here's a cool thing with Yuffie, though. She's also a long-range and magic-dealing character. Uh, if you press the triangle button, she will throw her, her star at an enemy. Mm -hmm. And it sticks to them. It sticks to them and uh. follows them, and it keeps spinning to constantly do physical damage. But now she doesn't <laughs> have the throwing star in her, hand, in her hand, so if you do a basic attack, she uh, will shoot out ninj ninjutsu magic instead. <laughs> so yeah, she can. she's a long-range character that deals magic damage as well uh, with these two different combat modes she's got. This is very good. It's like yeah. you're your own backup. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's she is so fun to play as. Well, that was easy. And my search for the elusive Moogle continues. So yeah, Yuffie is the, there was a point in the original Final Fantasy 7 in development where in the 
main menus, it actually said what job they were supposed to be, like in other Final Fantasies. Also, you can throw your shuriken like a Zelda boomerang to break stuff. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Um, ninja's job, or uh, Yuffie's job was supposed to be ninja. Uh-huh. Uh, well, it doesn't already say that. Like, she's got, she's got a bunch of the stuff that ninjas in Final Fantasy usually do. The main thing is just they throw shit. Her weapons alone, yeah. Yeah, they throw shit. So yeah, Yuffie starts off at level 25 in this DLC. She's already fairly powered up. The ninja armlet she's got, uh, nothing special defense-wise, but uh, if you take a look at the description for it, it doubles the AP earned of any materia set in it. Aha, uh -huh. okay. There's a bunch of stuff you get in this DLC uh, or upgrades that let you level up materia way faster because the this DLC is, if you're burning through the main story, is about four and a half-ish hours long. If you're doing all the side con content, it's like eight or nine. But mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. the materia has the same amount of experience it needs as the main game, so you gotta get stuff to level up way faster. Come with a bunch of other materia already. Uh, level 2 Fire, Ice, and Lightning, Max Out Subversion, Synergy, uh, Level 2 Steadfast Block. The stuff she already comes equipped with, uh, Level 2 Healing, she's got Parry and Deadly Dodge, Assess, and uh, also the Steel materia. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ninjas love to steal. They love it. Especially spunky, clumsy ones. Mm -hmm. Can't get enough theft. Alright, let's see how this plays out. So here's her deadly dodge. It's just a, a big, wide attack that can hit a lot of stuff at once. Uh, again, mm -hmm. real easy to get cool looking shit in photo mode. <laughs> so at, at any point, really. Uh, the music that's playing here is a battle version of Yuffie's theme from the original mm -hmm, game. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a very peppy, cheerful sounding theme, so it's funny to hear a battle version of it. <laughs> Sometimes you can have peppy, cheerful battles. Mm -hmm. Get lost! <laughs> Put that it? So while her perfect block is really good, not all attacks are like meant to be perfect blocks because they have like no tells because this isn't a right. devil may cry it still has to lean more on the rpg side of things so there's some hits that are just kind of more or less unavoidable or at least you take less damage but not all damage but right her her other her next ability is windstorm um just makes a big like wind vacuum to suck enemies in and does damage when you use windstorm she actually sends out her throwing star and it flies around the perimeter hitting stuff so when you use that move you actually switch to magic mode at first <laughs> here's another really powerful thing that yuffie can do we don't have any wind materia so we can't you know hit this guy's wind weakness but yuffie has this uh elemental ninjutsu move so <laughs> you can at any point uh for just one gauge uh, you can just change the elemental affinity of her ninjutsu magic attacks. Ah. Yeah, like when you're in the menu here, you can just flip through the different elements uh, as if it were different levels of a magic spell. So, and she has all four elements like available from the get go. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in the bottom right, right above Yuffie's name, there's that little gray diamond that indicates what element your ninjutsu magic is. And it is on a timer, it eventually drains, and you have to reapply whatever element you need, but it lasts for a decent amount of time. So throw out the, mag the star and just start throwing wind magic. That costs no MP. Piece of cake. Another thing I did in that fight earlier was, so if you throw out your star and it gets stuck to an enemy, if you press that button again early before the throwing star just naturally comes back to you, you'll go and retrieve the star, but instead of it coming back to your hand, you zip towards the enemy and grab it so you can keep doing melee on them. Ooh, one of these guys. Uh -huh. Hmm. That's a new number. We haven't seen 11 before. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, we no shop power. at the same cloak store. <laughs> Not a Moogle, don't care. Huh? 
You okay? Anybody home? <sighs> the mark of the Moogle. <laughs> the Moogle mark. Leave you to your reunion. Oh, well, guess I'm not going anywhere until I get that elevator moving. You can hit switches with the, the throwing star, too. Hmm. It's interesting the, the way that uh, she's characterized uh, like as an inverse of Cloud. Like they, they mm -hmm. are both trying to puff themselves up as a big hero but with very different ideas of what a, a that character me. is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like in the original game, if you did get Yuffie as, as you know, an optional secret party member, there was a little bit of con story content just for her that would only happen if you had her th in your party. Mm -hmm. Th there are other times where it's like, if she was in your party, she would have her own dialogue, but she didn't really get her own character or story beats. She was just, here's the ninja in your party, and she does or says some ninja shit. But she mm -hmm. had a couple um, character quirks that kind of became the only thing she was about in the spin-off materi uh, material, material, <laughs> such as, damn, Yuffie loves materia, and damn, Yuffie gets motion sick a lot. But there is some good stuff I can't wait to see them expand uh, at a later, in the next game, when she meets the main party. Mm -hmm. Because the way she bounces off Cloud was pretty fucking funny, even back then. <laughs> Even how, like, she is being led along by Moogles rather than Stamp. And she is yeah. associated with Moogles the way that Cloud is represented by Stamp. Yeah. It's also just nice to, like, it's kind of funny that we're, we're you know, this is a remake and then the DLC is essentially entirely new material. Nothing is being remade here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeesh, this town's a total dump. I thought Midgar was supposed to be the marvel of the modern world. Talk about false advertising. City of Mako? <laughs> City of garbage, more like. Yeah, you would have a completely de- like, depending on how you get to Midgar, mm -hmm. like, which level of the city you saw first, you'd have a completely different idea of what this place is. Yeah. And it's also just... I've been really interested in seeing, like, Yuffie as a canonical party member who gets a lot more you know, um, story beats and, and character development and stuff from the get-go, just because I really like the idea of having, you know, she's the one party member you've got who is an outsider to Midgar, or at least so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And specifically, she is from Wutai, so, you know, she's gonna have a whole different set of, of opinions about this shit. I think you're allowed to summon Leviathan in front of her as yes. long as she doesn't find out how you got Leviathan to summon. Yeah. Mm. I gotta do something. Oh, you'll do the trick. Come on down. You have Chadleys here too? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Every nation has a Chadley. I've already talked at length about how crazy impressive I think this game soundtrack is. That goes for the mm -hmm. DLC too. This DLC has three CDs worth of new tracks written for it. <laughs> like 80 new songs just for DLC. It's crazy. Just, I'm, I'm always amazed by how much character they put into these characters. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how you climb a ladder spunky, or at yeah. least I didn't know how that worked until today. Just the way she attacks those runs <laughs> says a lot. Have no fear! Yuffie's here! So this Bring DLC also expects you to, you know, kind of be at the top of your game. The, the difficulty <laughs> here is closer to... Also, yeah, the parry dodge there can totally do a perfect block. It's hard to do, but it, you can do it. 
but yeah, this game expects you to know like what you're doing. This is the most normal dog we've seen in the game. Yep. When I, at the end credits of the main campaign, when I showed that cool ro robot motorcycle guy, these were the dogs flanking him. The these wayward wolves. Ah. If you come into this fight, they will kill the shit out of you the first time you, you play this DLC, because their, their behavior is that if you th try to attack them, they will almost always dodge it and then counterattack you with one of two different moves that fuck you up. A headbutt or a throat clamp. Uh, you have to block the headbutt or dodge the throat clamp. Um, and if you do that successfully with either of them, they become pressured. But if you start attacking them before you can even have one bar to scan them, you just get fucked up. You will die here. I died here. <laughs> like twice. <laughs> They're so strong, these dogs. What if the, the motorcycle guy with the dogs is Roche? Oh, man. What if Roche is riding the man cycle instead of it just being a, a motorcycle robot? Oh, yeah. I'd be cool with that. Also, the parry dodge seems to have some slight protections against grab moves, because that was a grab move, and I just dodged clean through it. Uh, so... not even a thank you? Number 20. Again, just living in a world where somebody can just walk around in ominous black cloaks, and that's just... <laughs> not even something worth remarking about. I don't know if this is a problem. And if it's a problem, I don't know how to fix it. I'm looking for a Moogle man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've always been looking for a Moogle man. <laughs> Aren't we all? And it turns out there, you were the Moogle man all along. <gasps> wow. <laughs> You're the Moogle man I've been waiting for. I'm the Moogle man. <laughs> wow, that's the name of this episode, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever's going on with that guy, I don't think it's a status effect. I don't think it's something you just throw an item at. Is this where they mine the materia? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect glowy orbs in, in oh, the rock man. face. So while... Like, their, their areas we'll get to later on in this DLC that, like, they look fucking incredible. Like, the, you know, even the PS4 version of the game already looked very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. And while I still feel like those really nice looking areas could still happen, just with the graphics turned down slightly on the PlayStation 4, there is one thing in this DLC that makes me think, okay, it couldn't run on the PS4. And that is, you know how in the main campaign there's lots of times you gotta squeeze through small spaces and stuff, and those are almost always loading zones? Of course, <laughs> those, of course. Those do not exist in the DLC. <laughs> Hey, weird guy, you want to sign my cast? <laughs> okay, you got this! Yes, I also, as a kid, especially with the PS1 graphics, thought she just had a broken arm the whole game. <laughs> uh, no, it is a gigantic, like, arm guard to block stuff with, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I always thought it was a cast. And she's got that bracer on her left leg that also I thought she had, like, a bum leg or something. But yeah, that area we just went through connects to the back of Scrap Boulevard in the Sector 7 slums. This is a place Cloud and Tifa went through to fight bugs. Huh, okay. That rotten egg smell's gone. Must have gotten used to it. <laughs> the way things are going, I'll be working for Shinra next. Nice try, Midgar. <sighs> I'm talking to myself. City's getting to me. I tried have, having uh, Voidberger read those signs because she knows a little bit of Japanese, but there are too many fancy characters in there she doesn't know yet. <laughs> uh, I, I've been trying to figure out if anybody knows what that says, but I just have not found anybody yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably just says the Moogle Man awaits or something. Ooh, 
It's all right. There's an ice materia there that Cloud picked up. I don't know who dropped the new materia in the exact same spot. <laughs> person a person wait did you just come from any monster troubles or wait you're not gonna you have a whole speech for as soon as you meet people and you're not gonna <laughs> say a <laughs> word local reactor five has been temporarily shut down and all fires have been successfully extinguished the situation is under control and the people of our first city need not worry about any additional complications we're in the process of conducting a full forensic investigation, but we suspect the device used was similar to that employed in the attack on Mako Reactor Watch. Oh, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> Man, that's gotta be Avalanche! Not bad, not bad at all, but I can do better. What, you gonna you blow think? up three reactors? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. What? There's our palm! Oh, you're Avalanche? I'm Jija. Follow me. I'm what? not familiar Wait with up. Jija. Hmm. Are they allied with Avalanche? So, Jija, Chadley? why didn't you come meet me before? I figured Chadley. an elite W agent could find their own way. I may be elite, but it's not like I've ever been to Midgar. What exactly is a W anyway? Anyone who lives where you just came from. Think of it as a code name. Uh huh. Still can't believe they sent a kid to do this job. This kid could kick your ass! Saying you're a fresh face is all. Oh, don't Just worry. I know exactly what you're saying. Give me a break, will ya? I let you walk all over me? So why aren't they back yet? Well, judging from the news... Well, here we are. Ladies first. This takes place right around the time Cloud falls into Aerith's church. Oh, wow. Look at them zombies. They look so nice. Aww. Oh well, those people can't be important. <laughs> no, I don't know. They're just doing stuff. Man, just my luck. Dumb game sold out everywhere. Time to go to the doctor. Yep, this looks like a doctor to me. <laughs> Looking good. So this is also Avalanche's base, which means this is the other Avalanche. Okay. Why in the world? <laughs> Were the two avalanches operating in side by side buildings? <laughs> <laughs> These two are Billy Bob and Polk. And that's Nio. You're gonna sell me a T Mobile plan? Hi. My name is Yuki, Materia Hunter and Elite Special Forces Operative for the new Wu Tai government. I have orders to infiltrate Shinra HQ and steal their ultimate materia to prove to our common enemy that Wu Tai is not to be trifled with. Members of Avalanche, with your full support, we got this! <laughs> Ready to rumble, huh? You better believe it! So, did you guys meet Sonan yet? He was supposed to be here. Yeah, he got in three days ago. He's out on the town as we speak. <laughs> really seems to be enjoying it here. Oh, he does, does he? You, uh, got any bags? As if. Ninjas always travel light. It's like a rule. They've not heard of ninjas. Mm -mm. <laughs> but I did bring these. Wu Tai's famous da chow beans. Eat up. And here you go. Uh, huh. hmm. oh. Oh. <clears throat> you, the cutscene direction also changes when it focuses on Yuffie. It's a lot more goofy. <laughs> 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 They got some strong yes, teeth in Wutai. Sheesh, you ninjas are insane. <laughs> ah. Do me a favor, Yuffie, and wait here for Sonon. I gotta head out. Your ID should be ready for pickup by now. Then why don't I join ya? Nah, I got this. Besides, you reek of trouble. <laughs> huh? So with all of the, the, like, pacification of the populace that Shinra's into, they still have very weak teeth. You know what that means? Hmm. There's nothing wrong with fluoride. It, it's it's <gasps> not nefarious. Oh my god. If it was nefarious, Shinra would be using it and they could eat the beans. Mm-hmm. So yeah, along with 
just the whole idea of Barrett's avalanche being a splintered cell from a larger group um, being new material to the remake. That means all these characters are completely brand new. Mm -hmm. All this is new. And if you're looking at the diagram even, here, this is... Even the notion of whiteboards is new. <laughs> uh, this is a diagram of the, the front entrance to the Shinra building. That red hexagon is the thing Tifa had to jump into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get the key mm -hmm. card. <laughs> so yeah, well, I definitely think part of this is just like, oh, they needed to, for the side questy part of the DLC, they needed to just like reuse an area that's already been made, which is why... The other avalanche also has a building very close to Splinter Cell Avalanche. But also because there's like almost nothing in this building, it makes me feel like they just kind of set this building up temporarily for the thing they're currently doing. Yeah, yeah. Also, this shirt is wild. <laughs> Crisscross straps that wrap around your belt and button mm -hmm. button on it. It's so you don't lose your pants. Yeah. Giant pockets in that skirt must be pretty nice, though. Mm -hmm. I, I feel mm -hmm. bad for girls and how they never have pockets. It should not be the that's case. That's a great solution, though. Yeah. Like, that's cute. Yeah, it is. You must be tired from your trip. Why don't you get some rest? With all the noise in this city? I'm freaking possible. And with only a two-year contract. How about you tell me why the Shimmer <laughs> building they're keeping that materia instead? Don't hold out on me now. I know you know. Actually, I kind of don't. At least, not an exact location. All I know is that Shinra, for most purposes, treats Materia as a weapon. Which means the Advanced Weaponry Division probably deals with it. And since that's in the basement... I see. So, Shinra hides its top secret Materia in the basement. <laughs> you won't have to wait much longer, my precious. I promise. Just be careful, will you? Please? Oh yeah, you should introduce yourself to Billy Bob. He knows a thing or two about the Shinra building. And by the way, guac is extra. Oh. Fucking Billy Bob. Axel Rose looking motherfucker, like, <laughs> God. <laughs> He's all denim. <sighs> My teeth. You're welcome. So the materia I'm looking for is in the Shinra building, right? And where is that exactly? <laughs> it's the Ignorance big one. Truly is place, huh? <laughs> what did you just say? Oh, <laughs> didn't mean to offend you. Of course, you probably knew this already, but there's a whole other city built on the plate above us. Shinra building's right in the middle. You can't miss it. Oh, that one. Why didn't you say so? Now, if you want to get topside, you first gotta get out of the slums. And for help with that, you should talk to Polk. Or just get on the train. Oh wait, the train's broken. Yeah, the train's broken. There's a guy called Don Corneo. He might have the hook. Hmm. You look kind of nervous. I just want to make sure I have the plan down pat. You know, like how to get up top and all that. <sighs> well, if you're if going you to the ID, basement, though, do you need to go just up take top? The train up there. But with all the commotion going on, that's not really an option. Security's on high alert. If you ask me, I'm guessing the basement just isn't accessible unless you come from the top. I mean, if it's a top tight. secret basement. I want to go now. Be my guest then. Go get killed. Uh, harsh. I'm a super trained, highly effective operative, and I'm here to save the day and do all this solo while I throw a little tantrum. <laughs> She's 16. <laughs> Someone's still not back. Must be in Walmart then. What's Walmart? Let's just say it's a place for people with mature tastes. Mature tastes. Yeah, There's they sell materia pops there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> the the no, stamp musical is showing there for adults only. Like bars filled with smoke <laughs> so thick you can't even see, and drinks so bitter you want to spit them right back out. Uh, where everyone gets drunk and complains about how kids just don't understand the value of hard work. They'll be the death of society. Ugh, how can they not see that they're the ones destroying it? <laughs> Wu Tai's got a place like that, where grown ups drink their lives away. It's called the Happy Turtle. Interesting. There's a Happy Turtle in Midgar as well. 
Huh? His name is Eric. I, don't know I take care exactly of him very well. No. Never actually been, but I do see their flyers from time to time. He bites a lot they though. Do, huh? oh, he can't be happy all the time. He's just a turtle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I salute you, happy turtle. Come to think of it, there's a man who goes around putting up flyers for the bar. People call him Old Snapper, and he doesn't dress like your average Midgar male. Might be from Wutai. I gotta find him. Man deserves some Dachau beans. All right, so each of these three people also introduce you to, like, the big side quests uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of the DLC. You know about the VR combat simulation module, right? Huh? Uh, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Of it's course he wants to uh, meet girls by stimulates. inviting them to play some video games. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. It's a machine that puts you in a virtual world where you can practice fighting all you want. There's even a portable version of it. Guy around the corner has one. Uh-huh. Hardly ever see technology that cutting edge down here. So what do you say? Want to try it? I really don't have time to be playing around with some stimulator. But just to be polite, I guess I'll take it for a spin. <laughs> Guy's yes. name is Chadley. He's yes. over by the yes. neighborhood watch. Yes. yes. If you ever feel like some virtual training, I'm sure he'd be happy to help. He also does not dress like your typical Midgar male. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he dresses like, actually. There's nothing <laughs> typical about that boy. You look about ready to die of boredom. Wanna play Fort Condor? Fort Condor? Everybody just wants to play games <laughs> with this kid. Known. It hasn't been out long, so there's no way you W's would have heard of it. Uh, yes I have. And what's more, I'm awesome at it. I'll whoop you so hard you'll wonder if you ever knew the rules. For my benefit, then. Let me go over them. All right. So there's a brand new mini game in the DLC, which is kind of wild. So Fort Condor in the remake is a board game that Shinra has made. What? What is this? What is this? In Fort Condor is in the original Final Fantasy VII, but it's not a board game. It is an actual real location you go to that's mostly optional. You do have to go there for some story stuff. It is a village built into a mountain that has a big fucking bird on top of it guarding its egg. And uh -huh. in this mountain is like, uh, uh, Shinra wants this bird away. Get out of here. It's, it's, uh, it's roosting on one of their reactors. And so Shinra sends um it's sending their troops out there and there's a mini game where you're defending this bird and its egg via a real-time strategy mini game <laughs> with <laughs> such <laughs> units as stoner can roll a stone uh and so th this, this is like a whole military campaign shinra has because they've been constantly trying to get their reactor back and they can't quite get it back in Final Fantasy VII Remake in the DLC, I have no idea if... There, there's multiple things here. Either Fort Condor was a real military campaign, Shinra already won and made a board game about their military campaign, or Shinra is making a board game about an active military <laughs> operation <laughs> that is currently happening. And either mm -hmm, one fits mm -hmm. very well with Shinra, I feel. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to explain everything in Fort Condor. There's a bunch of different Fort Condor matches in this, but th this plays a lot like the original minigame, but just a lot better and more thought out. Right, right. So basically, there's kind of a rock, paper, or scissors thing here. You're deploying different units, and they're one of three different types. They're uh, vanguard, like red melee enemies or uh, uh, uh -huh. combatants. Uh, green ranged ones are blue, like defense ones. And up in the middle of the screen below the timer, you can see like the rock, paper, scissors and how that works. So you're just deploying units to to fight the other ones, and you're trying to reach the end of the other of the other side of the game board and kill their giant condor in the middle there. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. that's the victory. Um, you also have your own birds that you have to defend as well. All the units here, like up in the top of the screen, both you and your opponent have an ATB gauge that's filling up, and you use that gauge to deploy units, and your different units cost different amount of uh, bars to send out. Um, you don't give the units any direct commands or anything, they just, once you set them out, they just walk forward and start fighting stuff. <laughs> Yeah, 
the matches are three minutes max. Whoever has the least amount of outposts still alive is the loser. Mm -hmm. If you're at a tie, there is like a sudden death thing where you get uh, one more minute <laughs> to, to fight it out and everyone's gauge is like super sped up, so you're just cranking units out super fast. Come on, mom, one more minute! Come I gotta on. kill the bird! The bird! The bird's on the reactor! Yeah, seeing that this is a board game this time around makes me real curious what's gonna happen in the next remake game when you go across the area where Fort Condor would be. Is it just gonna already be, like, annihilated or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's just Seattle. A lot of people making board games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you also have Materia uh, here, so you got different spells you can cast on the board that don't cost any ATB to use, um, but each spell can only be used once in a, in a match. Mm-hmm. This is adorable. Though. Yeah, <laughs> the, the little ga game pieces are super cute. All the so all the different like units also kind of have their own behaviors and stuff too. The the whole aesthetic of this game is very like Hearthstone, actually. Yeah, yeah. And while it's just an instant victory if you take out the Condor in the middle, it is beneficial to try to take out the other two smaller birds because all three of these birds uh, do defend themselves, and it's harder mm -hmm. to fight the bird in the middle uh, if the other birds are also attacking you. By the way, the Soldier Game pieces have the exact same proportions as the PS1 models. <laughs> of course. Hell yes. Of course they do. I love it. <laughs> they have the Popeye arms and everything. It's so good. Like, Square Enix sells little... Um, teeny tiny little like two inch figures of some of the Final Fantasy 7 characters that are just it's just the PS1 models the super blocky ones right right but like seeing all these ones like I want all of them <laughs> I, this literally could not be a physical board game with the rules it has because you can't have an ATB gauge oh my god you could have an ATB gauge but you just have to have somebody constantly flipping an hourglass <laughs> that's yes. how that would work yes. oh man Yeah, I just want all these little game pieces. They're so cute. Uh, but yeah, when you beat people, you get Condor coins, which are kind of the new Moogle medal, and you also mm -hmm, usually get mm -hmm. some type of new game piece or something else for, for the Fort Condor Damn, game. Damn, Yuffie, how'd you do that? You totally kicked my ass. You mean you didn't lose on purpose? Wow. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a challenge, the Undercity's got no shortage of serious players. I've kind of got better things to do. Sure about that? Where it is, if you beat the Grandmaster, you can win some serious cash. Materia, too. Materia? That's right. Biggs or well, Wedge is the Grandmaster. I know it. <laughs> I feel it. Time of day till you've proven yourself. Whatever. Bring it on. Uh, all this talking's giving me a headache. I'm gonna go do some recon. <laughs> I won't stop you. Just don't go too far, okay? We could just advance the plot, but we're gonna we're gonna start doing some some side quest stuff. Looking at the our items, got those condor coins, and yeah. So well, we've got all these different units we were using in the game. There's a whole bunch of extra ones to collect. It's also kind of like a, a collectible card game in that in that oh, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's different game boards too. The different boards have different. Um, different stats, like how many units you can bring into battle, what materia they have, how fast the ATB gauge fills up and stuff like that. <laughs> so like, while they never show it, I'm under the impression that the the full game board is each player must have their own half and that you put those together mm. because you're collecting mm -hmm, the different mm. boards or something. But yeah, the different game pieces have different rarities uh, and all of that shit. It's... It's a really well thought out minigame. It's really fun. And like, so uh, Final Fantasy VIII had a, a minigame that people love called Triple Triad. That was a collectible card game minigame. 
that it was mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. really good um you could just run around and challenge like almost every not almost every but a lot of the npcs in the game you could just walk run up to them and go like you want to play this card game and then you would beat them and then <laughs> like you would win their cards and get better cards that way and stuff like that that's kind of how fort condor works too you can just run around sector seven and go like you want to fucking play this board game with me and they will be down Oh, man, that Moodle's hit some hard times. Yeah, I mean, look how many... <laughs> it's got two f- empty liquor bottles next to it. Bad breakup with that Moogle. Oh, man. A boomerang. It'll be a little bit before we check out the new weapon, because we, we just got a board game to play. Yeah, We gotta beat yeah. people up at board games. We have our priorities straight here. Uh-huh. Look at that! <laughs> it's cute. She's cute. 